Here we have the Creality CR10 3D printer. It's a 3D printer that's gotten a lot of recognition over the past little while as being a printer that's easy to use, easy to set up, doesn't break the bank, has a huge build volume, and delivers really nice quality prints pretty much right out of the box. And a lot of people are suggesting that this is the perfect printer for a beginner, somebody who's just getting started. The building difficulty is far less than a full kit, as it becomes pretty much pre-assembled, you just have to connect two axes together. And they say that even somebody with zero experience should be able to get it up and running within a couple of hours. I wanted to find out if that was true, and obviously with my experience, I can't find out myself if that type of assembly is easy and possible for someone with no experience. So I set out to find somebody who would be a perfect candidate for that, and then I realized that she had been living with me all along. So the assembly for this 3D printer is going to be handled by my wife. This is Kayleen. She has no experience with 3D printing. She's never so much as printed a model off of one of my printers, and she doesn't know a lot about how they work. So she's going to do the assembly on this. I'm going to be standing by in case anything goes horrifically wrong, and she's going to have access to the instructions there in the box and YouTube and all that type of stuff, and we'll see if it really is that easy for a beginner to set up. Hopefully by the end of the night, we'll have a print off of it. Let's find out. Okay, okay, what's the plan? Um, okay, so I guess first things first, we open the box. It's a completely sensible thing to do. Okay, so what's that look like to you? Uh, printer bed. That I do know. There we go. Pretty fully color. So as you can see, that comes pre-assembled and pretty much ready to go. Well, that's the control box and power supply, so that's what's going to make this thing run. Okay. And then we've got... Thermal tape? Uh, I think that's just straight masking tape. Oh. Masking tape? <laughs> and then... Assuming our tools and supplies. That's uh, probably <laughs> accurate. This guy. Pain to get out. Smells like mothballs. Is that the last thing in the box? Yeah. Okay. I will go ahead and. Did we lose something? Uh, well, it doesn't look like there's a ton of parts, so that's a good sign, right? Promising. Um, okay, so I, I guess... I um, didn't see any instructions, though. I guess crack into, yeah, crack into the parts block next, and we'll see. There we go. That is that. Oh. I would assume the instructions are on the USB key. That sounds like a pretty good place to start, so I guess we should have set up another laptop for us to be able to view that, right? Right. Actually, you do the honors, pull it out and see if there's a uh, micro SD card in that card reader. Oh, I thought it was a USB key. Check the other end. Yeah, okay. So, so the instructions are probably on that, so... Uh, I guess pull them up on my laptop. Ooh, there's a video! Well, we can flip through that if you would like. This is your game. How would you do it? Video. Okay. So first things first, I think we'll unwrap the bed. Will it hurt if I move the bed like that? Nope. Okay, so right away, they have you actually put it on, right? 
I think you're probably going to want to put that glass somewhere else, just to be safe. Yeah, that's fine. Um, the other thing I'm noting that they didn't show in the video is there is a cable tie uh, that goes across the bottom that you're probably going to want to clip before you try and set it up. See on the look up? There you go. video has already failed us. A little bit. There may be a pair of uh, cutters in that bag. A lot of people have gotten a pair of uh, snips to... Blue things? Yep. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it matters which... have shifted then. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so right away we're going to need some screws. Maybe I will open up the actual instructions. So I'll read the first part. It says, this machine is basically installed before leaving the factory. So only some steps, some simple steps need to be taken for you. Please take all parts out to ensure that they are in good condition. So we've done that. I'm also going to throw up a note. I know for some of the people that have gotten this, the hotbed's been loose on the track when they got it, but ours is nice and solid. So it looks like they're manufacturing them better or the company that imported this one fixed it before they sent it out. To prevent the coupling from being damaged during transportation, the two jack screws are not locked, as the following picture shows. Remove the thin film and put the lead screw or the lead screw, mm -hmm. lead screw. into the bottom of the coupling. All right, so I guess. So the video isn't the best way to start then because it definitely leaves out these parts. So. So that's called a grub screw. Okay, so do I need them? Yes. Um, I would say... No, I'll let you... I will not interfere. Oh, this is going to get frustrating. <laughs> Remove the thin film and put the lead screw in the bottom of the coupling. So here's another issue that I'm noticing for somebody that's never 3D printed before. I have no idea what a coupling is. Or what the lead screw is supposed to look like. Okay, so the coupling is the piece at the bottom that attaches to the motor, and the lead screw is what goes into the other end of it. So that's this right here. Okay. Um, so if we're looking it over, I would say... I would say it doesn't have a film on it. It feels very oily, actually. I'm seeing that there's like... Oh, no, it, never mind. That's just oil on yeah, there. It's like lubrication. Yep, it's been greased already. So, and the lead screw is definitely inserted, so I'm thinking maybe you just need to tighten down the grub screws. So, using the M2 inner hexagon wrench, tighten the two jack screws. Also not quite sure what an M2 inner hexagon wrench looks like, but uh, we'll find out. Well, there's only so many tools in there, so I think you can probably... You're looking for one that's going to fit into the hole in there, though, basically. Yeah, I figured. As much. I, uh, I would say that this isn't meant for people that have not done or researched into 3D printing at all. They definitely use technical terms that, uh, like for myself, for example, who've never really done 3D printing and just really uh, seen what Jay does and his videos and stuff, it's not enough for me to feel comfortable with the terminology that's being used. Do you think the video should have started off basically just following this guide? like? Yeah, like things like having to, like this is very important, and these are the first two steps, but they don't show that in the video, so we could have caused quite a bit of damage to the 3D printer, right? 
Yeah, I mean, if you didn't know that that was supposed to be screwed in or whatever, and those grub screws fell out while it was running, or, you know. I'm assuming they're not easy to get screws either. Uh, you, I usually get mine with the coupler, so I probably end up ordering another coupler. Okay. That okay. That looks good. Uh, so, yay, steps one and two are done. Now this is step one. <laughs> Connect the portal frame with a base with four M520 screws. Okay, so M5, uh, <laughs> so there'll be a larger screw, and 20 means that they're 20 millimeters long? Yes, 20 millimeters. Okay. As you can see, though, there are not a lot of parts. Like, there are probably 10 or 12 screws all together. Um, and I can see that it came with an extra Bowden coupler and an extra uh, nozzle, which might be confusing for some people who are asking why they have spare parts. That's a spare part. <laughs> that switches? It's a spare part on it. <clears throat> so that's a spare end stop. It's nice that they labeled it as spare part because, you know, otherwise, again, you might be sitting there going, why? Filament holder screws. So this is for later then? So I think my four screws are actually in here because it says use four M5 screws or five two. M5 screws, and they don't have four in them. Okay, I, I would agree with that. I'm actually, based on having watched videos on the assembly of this, I'm seeing parts that are definitely part of the upper assembly. So the bag says filament holder screw. I would disagree with that. Because there's not just that. Okay. Uh, and the only one I have four screws of are these here, so... Damn. Okay. So it says, connect the portal frame with the base platform with four M520 screws. It still says step one. <laughs> it does still say step one. So it looks like, oh. oh. That's good. It actually shows a picture of the screws that you're supposed to use. Does it matter if the... Uh, they will be on, on the head of the screw like that to go together, yeah. But it doesn't matter which... No, no, no So the other thing it doesn't mention is that you're supposed to put the washers on, um, but I can see from the picture that the washers are supposed to be on. So again, another little thing, uh, attention to detail that's been lost. Do you think that it's the bottom that they screw in on? I do think that it's the bottom that it screws in on. And again, it doesn't tell you that it screws in from the bottom, so... How difficult an assembly for one person do you think this would be? Um, probably. I mean, you could do it. You just have to balance things. Okay, so now... Okay, so I have attached the portal frame to the platform. So things that were missing in this one, with the video it doesn't tell you to um, secure the screws on the extruder first. Is that what we're doing? Uh, on the lead screw? The lead screws, yeah. So uh, it definitely didn't tell you to do that in the video, which is kind of alarming because it does say to prevent further damage. Um, you need to do that. And it told you to remove a film, which wasn't actually on the lead screw at all. Um, and then when it tells you to start putting things together, it doesn't explain to you where to do them. So it didn't say that they attach by the bottom. And it also didn't tell you to put the nut on it. Washer. The washer. So it didn't tell you to put the washer on it. <clears throat> so step one done. Step two, install the limit switch and fixed block. Uh, the limit switch is installed on the left side while the other is on the right side. Well, here's the thing. Depending on which way you're looking at the printer, how do you know which is left and right? Now, again, I know that for some that have been doing printers for a while, it's easy to tell which way it's front and back. Um, but for me, not so much. So 
I'm going to assume that this is the back. Right. Okay. And this is the front. So I'm looking at the front. Left side goes the switch. Now, again, it's not specific in which one is the switch and which one is the fixed block. I will assume that the switch is the one with the electronics on it. Yep, yeah, that's good. But again, they could be a little more specific as to which is which. Maybe some part labels, a little sticker on it to say which one's which. Maybe, yeah. And I, I mean, again, common sense, the switch is the one with the electronics, but I'll get you to put that one over there for now. Sure. So it says install the limit switch and fixed block. The limit switch is installed on the left side while the other is on the right, so it repeats itself again. But it doesn't actually tell you how to install them. There is pictures here. Now we can see that the next step three is wiring, so we know that there isn't another page related to this. Yeah. So, let me look. Does this have to go up then? It would probably make it easier. I think you can probably just spin that by hand by grabbing the, the thing on the bottom. The thing that's attached to the motor. The thing that you screw tightened. Does that spin fairly easily? Damn yes, but it's not doing anything to go up. Oh, maybe the lead screw isn't actually all the way into it. We might have to loosen those and push it in then. Okay. All right, so lesson learned. Lead screw, not where it's supposed to be. Basically at this point, the lead screw was bound up and we could not, no matter what we did, get it to drop into the coupling at the bottom. Um, ultimately it looked like it was bound up against the bearing in the top, so we are going to have to remove the bearing holder to see if we could loosen it up. Installed properly, probably. Why? Because it shouldn't be able to move, I don't think. Well, once the screws are in, maybe. Uh, okay. So now. Can you okay, so definitely not what they explained to do. I would say that's probably not supposed to be that way. I would guess. I would guess that's supposed to slide easily, so I think ours just got a little jammed in. Um, in transportation. transportation. That's the word we're looking for. English is hard. So now I'm going to go back in and tighten these guys again. The grub screws. So you say. Okay. Now what I was trying to do get the bed to go up. There we go. So I can go back to installing the limit switch. See, now the picture doesn't show these switches on the outside. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is the one I'm looking at. Okay, hang on. So it's supposed to go this way. Okay, so it isn't supposed to line up with anything. Okay. And what are you doing behind the part right now? Nothing. Sorry, I thought you were already... So, <clears throat> if you'll notice the screws will be any which way. You've got to line them up so that these little washers uh, go into the tracks on the machine. And once you've done that, then you can use your wrenches. I don't know what that big one's for. I'm going to find out soon to just tighten them in. So again, another thing it doesn't tell you is that these need to be loosened before you put them in the track. Now, the only problem is, is I already tightened these. So am I the ideal candidate for this printer? 
Probably not, because my knowledge is probably less than they're expecting from somebody that wants to build a 3D printer. However, their instructions are lacking a few things that could save you some heartache and redoing later on. But you are the ideal candidate for this video. Yes. Let's put it this way. Has any part of it been overly frustrating, like pull your hair out? No, because you've been here. But if I were doing this alone and I'm missing these little steps, uh, it would be quite frustrating, I think, because like little things like loosening these things so that they screw in tighter and those are like, to me, not common sense things. So that would be terribly frustrating for me. Okay, and then we'll put this guy in, same thing, we want these to line up. Okay, so now those are installed. Um, step three is actually the wiring now. So we've got the X, Y, Z, and E axis. I'm going to be honest, this drawing is a little confusing to me. So after it shows you how to do the wiring, there's an important note that says there are two kinds of voltage for your choice, a 110 volt and a 220 volt. Before you turn on the power, please choose the correct one. So I suppose that depends on where in the world you are living. Okay, so step three, which is supposed to be the last step, um, is the wiring. Let me have a look. So is it that these need to plug in to specific parts then? Yes. Okay, so I think you should turn it back towards me. I'm just going to show quickly on the camera the way they've set this up. So there are two sets of wires coming from each of the pieces for the axis C's, uh, except for this one, which has four. Uh, so they've actually coupled your end stop connectors and your motor connectors together, which should make this easier. Um, and I will show you they labeled them. One, two, and three? Uh, no, X, Y, Z. Oh, perfect. Okay. So and E, I would imagine. Okay, so you want this turned towards you? Yes, please. One is the x-axis, and that's to the limit switch. No, nope, that doesn't make sense to me. Where did you see them labeled? Ah, okay, so one is the x-axis. That's why. Okay, which is this one here. How do I know what goes where? Okay, well, what are they labeled? E. Ah, so E is on its own. Can I hurt this if I plug it in wrong? Uh, it should be able to only go in one way and it shouldn't require a lot of pressure. You can see on this one here, there's a, a tab. Like, so if you can't see the tab on that one, so the tab is... I think you have that yeah, like that. Would it help if I tilted it up so you can see underneath it? Sure. Does it show in the diagram where it is? Or does it just have that label as X? Just has a one as X. It's supposed to go in here. Really? Yep. So not clear with where your wiring's supposed to go. Does it go straight in like this or should it go up and in? Um, what's the connector look like? Does it have a tab on it as well? Yeah, it does. Um, no, does it like cause it's going into a frame here. So does it go straight in like this or should I come up and in? Uh, just straight in from that side's fine. Okay. Here. Oh, so. I see. So the little, the tabs are going in the little divots? Yep. Okay, then it has to go this way. Now I have an E coming off of here, and I will tell you that in the diagram for the wiring, it has one, two, and three, one, two, three, and four, which is the X, Y, Z, and E axis. But then underneath it, it shows you on the diagram one, two, three, and it tells you X, Y, Z, but it doesn't show where the E axis is. However, oh. I can tell that it's supposed to go up here. Do you see what I'm saying? It doesn't say four. It, it does actually. But down here it says one, two, three, X, Y, Z. Uh, the limiter switch, because only X, Y, and Z, they, your E doesn't have a limiter switch because that just pushes filament. I don't like it. <laughs> and I'm doing the review, so. Oh, okay. Now, 
So future revisions should have a limiter switch on the extruder. What is a limiter switch? Mean? Uh, so when you tell your printer to home, meaning go to zero zero zero, it moves these until it hits a switch, and that switch says this is zero. Oh, okay. So with this, there is no zero because it's just constantly pushing filament oh, through. Oh, see, and that's not where I understand from the diagram, but again, I don't know what limiter switches are, so... Yep, no worries. Okay, so there's that one. Good? Good. Okay, so our wiring is done. Again, with a little bit of knowledge, um, it's it wasn't difficult to do by any stretch of the imagination. Now, does it matter which one of these go to? It does, but let's see if it's actually oh. in the instructions. It's not. So the next page after this is the warning to pick. And then we've got, thanks for reading. We're trying our best to continue improving. If you have any questions or suggestions, please contact us, which I will do because... Um, there's no instructions on how to connect the heated bed or the hot end to the box. Now, it is somewhat obvious because the... Uh, the ends are different. Yeah. So this one here has a bunch more pins than the one for the hot bed. The hot bed only has four, and this one has one, two, three, four, six, seven, it looks like. Yeah, I'll show you. I'm getting ahead of myself. So those are the two. Very easy to see which one's plugged into which by the time you look at it. But it doesn't... Again, if this is somebody... Starting from scratch, the more specific you are with instructions, the better it is. And we have to look at it too as, yeah, somebody who has no experience with it could go, well, that's for add-ons or accessories later on, and then go, why doesn't my printer work? Okay. So, but mm, I still have some parts. Yep. So other things that we have to assemble is the thing that holds your filament. So your extra screws are probably for that. And I'm also noting, unless we, we will go take a look at the rest of the instructions. Oh, and there is a link to an instructional video on the end of that that's hosted on YouTube. We probably should have gone through all the instructions, but I'm going based on the, I just got this in the box and I want to put it together. Okay, so the next, so step one, attention before printing. I wonder if we should have gone. Looks like instructions for use, so I guess that would be once it's built. No, these are the ones... Like these are your be careful oh, okay so not those and the specifications of the printer in there too yeah oh so there's an instructional video showing how the t-nuts work oh see great but if i'm choosing my media whether i'm going to watch a video or follow the written instructions i don't want I think the instructions could be improved by, if you're going to have both video and the instructional text, have a refer to this uh, in the instructions, yeah. refer to this video on the card, but... Okay, so that's how to easy peasy now that I know. All right, so, great, I've set up my printer, how do I print? Well, I don't know. So I've got a bunch of parts left over. So you have an extra limiting switch, an extra nozzle, an extra Bowden connector. Um, some extra T-screws. Some thumb screws. A couple of washers. So, we know that that and that are going to be for the um, filament spindle. No, you know. I know that. Um, I wouldn't. Right. So I would probably guess also that your thumb screws are what are going to be used for that. Okay. So do you want to attach that now? I don't know how. And I wouldn't know how because there's no instructions that came with it showing us how. So. Let's try this And the other thing we're going to have to get you to do, and this is important, is connect your Bowden tube, which is this guy here, to the extruder. Because right now there's no way for the filament to get from the extruder here into the hot end. This is the, how it gets there. Well, how do you do that? So there's a coupler here. So basically you just jam it into the hole right there. Here? Yeah. That's it? That should be it. What is this for? Um, I would say it's probably for cleaning the nozzle. Oh, I see. I thought the sponge was part of it. 
I thought it was a swab. Just got a needle on the uh, the end of it, so. Okay. Um, this is to scrape the tape and stuff off the bed, I guess? Uh, that's for when your print's finished. That's to pry it up. If or it's, uh, to spackle your drywall. Or to spackle your drywall, yes. Uh, power cord, USB cable to connect to a computer. Yep. Now, can you do this wirelessly as well, or is this got to be USB connected? Uh, as it stands, it's going to be wired only. If you had something like a Raspberry Pi with OctaPrint and wireless on it, then yeah, you could control it wirelessly. Okay. Um, all right, so next we need our phone mount, I guess? Yeah, well, and we're going to have to uh, level the bed, so at this point I think we'll put the glass back on. Okay. Um, and I, I don't think we'll get into, you would want to put, uh, you would want to put tape on it. I don't think we'll get to covering the whole bed in tape. I think we'll use just a little bit of this to do our test print. Okay. What are you printing? Benji? We can bet print Benji, we can print whatever you want. All right, so the first thing I think we'll want to do is set this up like you're going to print with it. Yep. Where are you going to do that? Well, we'll do the configuration stuff here. So, like, eventually it's going to go over there, which is completely clean if you were to look at it. Like, there's a pristine spot for it already, 100%. Shit! <laughs> <Push it. laughs> go ahead and the switch is back here. And is it set to the one? Yes, it is. Okay, and that's not a switch that I could have accidentally touched? Right. And it turns on. What does it say on the screen? 3D printer. Well, that's good. It knows what it is. The machines are becoming self-aware, though, so that's probably not the greatest thing. Uh, you really can't see that. That's okay. Okay, so now what? It says 3D printer's ready. Let's go. Okay, well, we need to connect it to something, so I think we're going to end up having to use the laptop. Okay. Um, uh, do we want to move the laptop up here, then? Yeah, sure. Okay, so we're just plugging in the USB stuff. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Now. Okay, so this is stuff that's probably not going to be in the instructions. Uh, we're going to fire up Repetier Host, which is the software that'll allow my computer to talk to this. Um, so you go ahead and do it. Before we get too technical, Kay is going to need herself a little beverage. She's drinking a Mott's Clamato Caesar, which is been very difficult for us to find in the States whenever we go, so <laughs> I think they have Bloody Marys instead. Not the same thing. So at my work, we use Macs. Doesn't mean I'm a fan of Mac, but it is what I've used for the past two and a half years, so. Would you like to use this white filament that came with it? No, I want to use the orange stuff. I do want to use the filament that came with it. Nope, don't care. So the one, of the one of the things that we'll want to do that may or may not be somewhere in the video is that we're going to want to warm up the hot end and when the hot end is warm you're going to want to tighten the nozzle onto it because metal expands as it heats and you want to make sure that basically it's fully tightened in there so that it can't come loose. This hot end? Yeah. Do you mm. have a wrench that'll fit that? Maybe that one? We have a winner? Yeah. Okay. okay. So, under pet your hose, click connect. So what's happening here is every time we click connect in the program, the restart screen shows up on the box here. Okay, well we might have to pause it there so I can take a look and find out what's going on. Uh, actually what we'll do is we'll continue, uh, not being able to send a print to it, we'll do the rest of it from here. So I'll walk her through the instructions on here. So you can actually control the heat from here. So press on the knob, go down to prepare. Now if we're doing So 
So basically, and they usually would include a piece of cardboard or a piece of paper, but you essentially want to get it so close that a piece of paper can just, like it gets tugged on as it goes underneath. And do I do both of them? Uh, yeah, and then we're also going to do it at the back. So you'll, I'll just eyeball it. I'll tell you when you close. And more on this side then? Yeah, yeah, we'll start on this side and then you'll bring the other side up. So do one side at a time. Okay, um, on our micro SD card that came with it, they say there's supposed to be a print ready to go. Okay, so the folder. Nope. We're going to put the micro SD card in. Oh, I see. Since Repetier keeps resetting it, so I can look into that a little bit further, we'll go ahead. Uh, okay, so we should probably test the extruder, make sure that filament comes out, right? Yeah. We have a test on G-code. G-code is what it uses to tell it what to do. Okay. So, it's heating. Do you think it's a Benji? No, I think it's a cat. A cat? Yeah. Did you know that already? No, I'm guessing. I think it's a flower. Well, I think we'll uh, we'll come back after the print is done. We'll see how it ended up. Um, the bed adhesion looks like it's good. It looks like it's going to stick. So uh, we'll come back to our conclusion after the print's finished, and uh, hopefully I'll have a better idea also as why to repetitive your host was not connecting to it properly. And if it's a flower... Or a cat. A cat or a Benji. Bye-bye! So, okay, what do you think of your first 3D printer build? Well, we have a successful print off of it, so it must have gone pretty good. Uh, we ended up with not a cat or what was you it? Was a, flower. a flower. Yeah, so we didn't end up with a cat or a flower, but we did end up with this um, four-leaf clover container. Um, it's kind of like a flower. Kind of like a flower, yeah. Um, so yeah, it printed really successful. There's no Z-banding on it. Um, it's fairly smooth. It doesn't look like it skipped at all. It adhered to the bed really well. It was really easy to take off. Um, I got a little excited and pulled it off before we started recording, so I apologize. Um, but yeah, everything seemed to be really successful with it, and I'm, I think it's the best print we've had off of a first print yet. Yeah, I mean, with zero calibration, zero effort put into actually getting it up and running, this was just G-code that was on the memory card, and uh, we started it up, and away it went. Uh, we're going to have to lower it a little bit. The, uh, the bottom layer isn't perfectly smooth, but... Yeah, I mean, it, it didn't come off the bed during print, and uh, it's a very solid print, so it's pretty good. Yeah, and no masking tape on the glass bed, uh, just a little hairspray is what we used, um, so that's neat. And this is the first time you've printed with a glass bed, right? Yeah, so far I've only been printing straight onto... Uh, actually, I can't say for sure it's the only time I've printed on glass. The Cherry printer's running with glass as its bed, but um, first time I printed directly on the glass that's been heated, and... Uh, it stuck just as well, or if not better, than printing onto the aluminum beds on my other printers. Yeah, and it didn't stick as hard as others do, right? So, yep. Um, as far as the build goes, there's definitely some missing steps in the instructions that I would have liked to have seen, especially things that I just 
didn't know um, definitions or more specifics on things um, that would have made a little bit more sense. For example, when they told me to remove the film on the... On the Z uh, lead screw. The lead screw, yeah. Um, I would have had no idea what a lead screw was, to be honest. So uh, little things like that, pointing out where it was and what needed to be done, uh, would have been great. Instructions on how to add the spool holder, as well as how to load your filament, um, would also have been really fantastic because those are definitely things that I would not have known how to do. Um, so if they are marketing this towards somebody that isn't, um, you know, a veteran 3D printer and who's just getting started for the first time, they can definitely do some work on their instructions uh, to make it a little more clear as to what those are. Yeah, it seems like none of it's terribly difficult to figure out and probably a little bit of searching on YouTube would have brought up some answers. So I don't think somebody with zero experience is going to be incapable of getting it printing, um, but I think they could add a little bit more to make it that much easier. Yeah. Um, it's worth noting, too, that uh, this printer is a Creality uh, CR10, but it's rebranded by Hicktop. And I believe that that's why some of the stuff that's included in the manual isn't necessary. Um, I think that's why the bed and the um, Z-axis carriage are uh, all tightened, as well as the film that was removed off the lead screw. So um, the instructions, you know, maybe Hicktop needs to update the instructions while they're doing all that to it before they send it back out to uh, make it more clear to people that are buying that version. But other than that, in less than an hour and a half, we had a 3D printer printing a successful print. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I definitely didn't think it was going to be as easy. Um, I definitely thought this was going to be a two or three day project. So I'm super excited that uh, we were able to finish it in the short amount of time. Um, yeah. In terms of uh, performance, it, we printed, some, uh, printed it pretty quick. We played with the speed as it was going. Uh, it's pretty quiet in terms of the motors. Uh, I will say that the control box and the cooling fan in there, pretty loud. Um, we started recording this earlier and we ended up having to restart recording because the sound from that was kind of like almost drowning out our voices. So while the print is fairly quiet uh, and the fans easier to dismiss, if you're in an environment where you're trying to record something, then yeah, you're probably going to want to keep that in mind. Other than that, success? Yeah, success. Yeah, so I definitely recommend it for somebody that is trying this out for the first time. It's a great first printer, not crazy expensive either, so... Yeah, exactly. Uh, we were able to track this one for about $700 Canadian, um, so not crazy amount of imports, and buying it from Amazon meant that we had it in two days. Yeah. On our front porch. On our front porch, yep. <laughs> that is one thing to be careful with. They just left on the front porch, no signature required, so I know that uh, some people have had parcels go missing, so you know, if you're ordering it in Canada, keep in mind that they may not require signature, and you know, it could be tempting for someone. But that should do it for the CR10. We're going to tune it over the next month or so and uh, see if we can get better quality prints, and then we'll come back and do an update to let you know how we like it. Uh, if you found this video helpful, toss us a thumbs up to let us know that you did. Uh, if you're new here, subscribe and click the bell so you're notified when new content comes out. If you've got something you'd like us to look at in the future, you can toss it in the comments below. And until next time, stay creative.